Welcome to the Ultimate Sports Blog Podcast. Today is Thursday, February 14th, 2019. Today I'm going to recap yesterday's college basketball, NBA, and NHL games. Look ahead to tonight's slate in each of those sports. NFL mock draft, second base rankings. I'll also be doing my best bet of the day. Let's go right into college basketball. A lot of games yesterday. Army defeated Boston University 71-61. Army is 12-14. BU is 11-15. Number one, Tennessee defeats South Carolina 85-73. Tennessee 23-1. and South Carolina 12-12. Admiral Schoenfield had 21 for the Vols and Trey Campbell at 19 for South Carolina. Number 13, Villanova defeats Providence 85-67. Villanova 20-5. Providence 14-11. Eric Pascal had 25 for the Wildcats and Nate Watson had 18 for Providence. St. Louis defeats George Washington, 73-58. St. Louis, 16-9. George Washington, 7-17. Javon Best had 26 for St. Louis, and DJ Williams had 21 for George Washington. Number 17, Florida State defeats Wake Forest, 88-66. Florida State, 19-5. Wake is 9-14. Chris Kamuje had 20 for Florida State, and Chande Brown had 20 for Wake. Gardner-Webb defeats Charleston Southern, 77-74. Gardner-Webb, 16-10. Charleston Southern, 11-13. David Efiani had 33 for Weber. And for Charleston Southern, Christian Keeling had 20. Memphis defeats East Carolina, 75-69. Memphis, 15-10. East Carolina, 9-15. Jeremiah Martin had 31 for the Tigers. And Seth Lede had 15 for the Pirates. Georgia Southern defeats South Alabama, 75-65. Georgia Southern 15 and 10, South Alabama 12 and 13. Calvin Wishart had 14 for Georgia Southern, and Herb McGee had 18 for South Alabama. Florida Gulf Coast defeats NJIT 57 55. Florida Gulf Coast 11 and 16. NJIT 18 and 8. Skadrock Casimir had 15 for Florida Gulf Coast, and Abdul Lewis had 16 for NJIT. Rutgers defeats Northwestern 59 56. Rutgers 12 and 12, Northwestern 12 and 12. Montez Mathis had 12 for Rutgers and Vic Law had 17 for Northwestern. Miami upsets Clemson 65-66. Miami 11 and 13, Clemson 15 and 9. Dijon Vasilik had 22 for Miami. Marquise Reed had 19 for Clemson. UMBC defeats Binghamton 64-50. UMBC 16 and 10, Binghamton 7 and 19. Joe Shrubune had 16 for UMBC and Sam Simmons had 20 for. Binghamton. Campbell defeats Hampton, 87-84. Campbell, 15-10. Hampton, 10-14. Chris Clemens had 48 for Campbell, and Kaylin Fisher had 34 for Hampton. VCU defeats Richmond, 81-60. VCU, 18-6. Richmond, 10-15. Isaac Vaughn had 16 for VCU, and Nathan Kayo at 18 for Richmond. Loyola, Maryland defeats American, 86-84. Loyola, Maryland, 9-16. American, 13-11. Andrew Koska had 31 for Loyola, and Saeed Nelson had 20 for American. Vermont defeats New Hampshire, 73-44. Vermont, 20-5. New Hampshire, 3-21. Anthony Lamb had 20 for Vermont, and Nick Garama had 11 for New Hampshire. Hartford defeats Maine, 81-73. Hartford, 13-12. Maine, 5-21. Travis Weatherington had 22 for Hartford, and Andrew Fleming had 16 for Maine. LaSalle defeats Duquesne, 73-72. LaSalle, 8-15. Duquesne, 16-9. Pookie Powell had 25 for LaSalle, and Michael Hughes had 18 for Decane. Iona defeats Siena 57-52. Iona 9-15, Siena 13-13. Tajuana Gee had 25 for Iona, and Evan Fisher had 17 for Siena. UCF defeats South Florida 78-65. UCF 18-5. USF 17-7. Taco Fall had 21 for UCF, and David Collins had 20 for USF. UMass Lowell defeats Albany, 86-54. Lowell had, or is 14-12, Albany, 8-17. Christian Luetti had 20 for Lowell, and Adam Luca had 16 for Albany. Georgia State defeats Troy, 77-63. Georgia State, 17-8. Troy, 11-13. Javon Johnson had 13 for Troy, and Georgia State's leading scorer was Demarcus Simmons with 27 points. Missouri State defeats Evansville 68-56. Missouri State 14-12. Evansville 10-16. Uh, 
Tuel De Silva had 17 for Missouri State, and Marty Hill had 15 for Evansville. North Florida defeats Kennesaw State, 80 to 57. North Florida 11 and 16. Kennesaw 5 and 21. Yvonne Gandhi Rosa had 19 for North Florida, and Danny Lewis had 15 for Kennesaw State. Jacksonville defeats Stetson 93 to 70. Jacksonville 12 and 15. Stetson 5 and 21. JT Nate had 17 for Jacksonville, and Marquez Sumner had 20 for Stetson. I'm sorry, 10. Winthrop defeats Presbyterian, 93-85. Winthrop 17 and 8. Presbyterian 15 and 12. Adam Pickett had 23 for Winthrop, and Francois Lewis had 23 for Presbyterian. Temple defeats SMU, 82-74. Temple 18 and 7. SMU 12 and 12. Shiz Austin Jr. had 28 for Temple, and Jamal McMurray had 22 for SMU. Longwood defeats High Point 62-59. Longwood 14 and 13. High Point 13 and 12. Shabuti Phillips had 17 for Longwood and High Point had 17 for High Point. UNC Asheville defeats South Carolina Upstate 57-53. Asheville 4 and 22. Upstate 6 and 21. Tejon Jones had 17 for Asheville and for Upstate, Deion Holmes had 18. George Mason defeats UMass 80 to 75 in overtime. George Mason 15 to 10, UMass 9 and 16. Otis Livingston the second at 21 for George Mason, and Carl Pierre had 26 for UMass. Lafayette defeats Navy 80 to 74. Lafayette 8 and 16. Navy 8 and 16. Justin Jaworski had 19 for Lafayette, and Cam Davis had 18 for Navy. Stephen F. Austin defeats McNeese 67-57. Stephen F. Austin 13 and 10. McNeese 7 and 17. Kevon Harris had 22 for Stephen F. Austin, and Trey Touchette had 12 for McNeese. Liberty defeats Lipscomb 74-66. Liberty 22-5, Lipscomb 20-5. Scotty James had 17 for Liberty, and Rob McMarry had 22 for Lipscomb. Colgate defeats Holy Cross 74-70. Colgate 16-10, Holy Cross 13-13. Tucker Richardson had 20 for Colgate, and Caleb Green had 19 for Holy Cross. Number 22, Virginia Tech defeats Georgia Tech 76-68. Virginia Tech 19-5, Georgia Tech 11-14. Michael DeVoe had 22 for Georgia Tech, and Ty Outlaw had 20 for Virginia Tech. Lamar defeats Northwestern State 75-70. Lamar 13-12, Northwestern 9-16. Nick Garth had 23 for Lamar, and Malik Matoyer had 12 for Northwestern State. NC State defeats Syracuse 73-58. Good win for NC State. They're 18-7, Syracuse is 17-8. Frank Howard had 21 for Syracuse, and Braxton Beverly had 21 for NC State. Northern Iowa defeats Illinois State 77-64, UNI 11-15, Illinois State 14-12. Trey Barrow had 20 for UNI, and then Illinois State's Phil Fain had 21. Houston Baptist defeats Central Arkansas 75-71, Houston Baptist 8-14, Central Arkansas 10-15. Ty Dalton had 22 for Houston Baptist, and Thak Yumra had 22 for Central Arkansas. Abilene Christian defeats Nichols 74, or I'm sorry, 64-48. Christian is 20-5 and Nichols is 11-13. Jaron Lewis had 15 for Abilene Christian and Kevin Johnson had 15 for Nichols. Sam Houston State defeats Texas A&M Corpus Christi 70-69. Sam Houston State 17-8. A&M Corpus Christi 10-14. Cameron Delaney had 19 for Sam Houston State and Jashawn Tall had 18 for A&M Corpus Christi. Bradley defeats Loyola Chicago 70, or I'm sorry, 61-54. Bradley 14-12. Loyola Chicago 16-10. Darrell Brown had 21 for Bradley. Our Marquez Towns had 15 for Loyola Chicago. Indiana State defeats Valparaiso 87-82 in overtime. Indiana State 13-12. Valparaiso 13-13. Tyreek K had 32 for Indiana State, and Derek Smith had 23 for Valpo. SC Louisiana defeats Incarnate Word 70 to 64. SC LA is 12 and 13, and Incarnate Word 6 and 18. Moses Greenwood at 25 for Southeast Louisiana, and Charles Brown at 23 for Incarnate Word. Ole Miss defeats Auburn 60 to 55. Good win for Ole Miss. They're 17 and 7. Auburn 16 and 8. Brian Tyree had 20 for Ole Miss, and Chuma Okiki had 23 for Auburn. Xavier defeats Creighton 64-61 in overtime. Xavier 12 and 13, Creighton 13 and 12. Najee Marshall had 23 for Xavier, and Martin Krimpej had 18 for Creighton. 
Seton Hall defeats Georgetown 90 to 75. Seton Hall 15 to 9. Georgetown 15 to 10. Big win for Seton Hall. Miles Powell at 30. Jesse Govan had 20 for Georgetown. And Powell's of obviously Seton Hall. 15 Texas Tech defeats Oklahoma State 78 to 50. Tech is 25. Oklahoma State is 9 15. Jarrett Culver had 19 for Texas Tech. And Cameron McGriff had 18 for Oklahoma State. Utah State defeats Wyoming 76-59. Utah State 19-6. Wyoming is 6-18. Justin James had 26 for Wyoming. And Sam Morell had 19 for Utah State. New Mexico defeats San Jose State 92-60. New Mexico 11-13. San Jose State is 3-20. Keith McGee had 20 for New Mexico. And Noah Bauman had 10 for San Jose State. Florida defeats Vanderbilt 66-57. Florida 13-11. Vanderbilt 9-15. Kayante Johnson at 15 for Florida, and Aaron Naismith had 26 for Vanderbilt. Nebraska defeats Minnesota 62-61. Nebraska 14-11, Minnesota 16-9. James Palmer Jr. had 24 for Nebraska. Jordan Murphy had 19 for Minnesota. UCLA defeats Cal 75-67 in overtime. UCLA 13-12, Cal 5-19. Chris Wilkes had 27 for the Bruins, and Darius McNeil had 18 for the Golden Bears. UC Davis defeats Cal State Northridge, 76-59. UC Davis, 9-14. And Northridge is 10-15. Joe Mooney at 21 for Davis. And for Northridge, Terrell Gomez had 24. CSC Fullerton defeats Long Beach State, 85-82. Fullerton, 11-13. Long Beach State is 9-17. Khalil Ahmad of Fullerton at 19. And Long Beach State's Deshaun Booker had 22. Fresno State defeats Boise State 65-63. Fresno 18-6. Boise 11-14. Braxton Huggins had 26 for Fresno. And Alex Hobbs had 18 for Boise. Colorado defeats Arizona State 77-73. Colorado 15-9. Arizona State 16-8. McKinley Wright had 24 for Colorado. And against Dort had 21 for Arizona State. Stanford defeats USC 79-76. Stanford 13-11, USC 13-12. Casey Okpala had 18 for Stanford, and Benny Boatwright had 19 for USC. Tonight's slate is pretty big. At 5 o'clock, you have Kent State of Western Michigan. 6 o'clock on CBS Sports Network, St. Francis, Pennsylvania, Fairley Dickinson. Dickinson is laying four points. I think Dickinson is going to win and cover. 6.30 Eastern Illinois at SIU Edwardsville, 7 o'clock ESPN, number 9 Houston at UConn. Houston's laying 9.5. I could totally see Bobby Hurley's team getting up for this one. I'm sorry, Danny Hurley, wrong Hurley. Um, but the Cougars have been destroying everybody left and right. UConn isn't UConn of old quite yet. So give me Houston to win and cover the 9.5. Stack it hard at Bryant. On ESPN2, you have Illinois at Ohio State. Ohio State's laying eight. They'll win and cover. They're just a better team than Illinois. Drexel at James Madison. Hofstra at Charleston. Central Connecticut State at Wagner. Rice at FIU. Grand Canyon at UMKC. VMI at Wofford. Robert Morris at Mount St. Mary's. IPUI at Youngstown State. UIC at Cleveland State. Delaware at Towson. Mercer at Western Carolina. North Texas at FAU. Tulsa and Tulane. Tulsa's laying six and a half. They'll win and cover. Northeastern at UNC Wilmington. LIU Brooklyn at St. Francis Brooklyn. The Citadel at East Tennessee State. UTEP at Louisiana Tech at 730. Texas Arlington at Little Rock. Greensboro at Furman. Those two teams, by the way, are combined 42-8. and eight. Furman is laying three. Greensboro has been the best team in that conference all season long. But I think this is where they take their first loss as Furman starts to make a compelling at-large case. I know Greensboro has one. I think Furman is going to get into that conversation now with the win over Greensboro because that's a Quadrant 1 win, and then also Furman has a ticket that is the win at Villanova. Eastern Kentucky at Moorhead State at 8 o'clock. You have Oakland at Green Bay, Detroit Mercy at Milwaukee, Texas State at Arkansas State, Belmont at Tennessee State. Belmont, by the way, is another sneaky at-large candidate. The UTSA at Southern Miss. Seattle at Texas Rio Grande. CBS Sports Network, UAB at Marshall. Marshall's laying four. They'll win and cover. They're just a better team than UAB. South Dakota State at Omaha. Middle Tennessee at Western Kentucky. Oral Roberts at North Dakota State. Cal State Bakersfield at Chicago State. 830 Jacksonville State at Tennessee Tech. 
Southeast Missouri State at Tennessee Martin. 9 o'clock ESPN 2. Murray State at Austin P. Great game in the OVC. Murray's laying one. They have the best player on the court in John Morant. They're going to win and they're going to cover. I won't be surprised if this is a double-digit win for Murray, who else is making an at-large case. With all these um, major schools having down years from a conference standpoint, like Big Ten, Big East, Pac-12 obviously all having down years. Well, not really the Big Ten, but there's just a, a mess in the middle of the Big Ten to the point where a team like Nebraska is not really that good but could get in in theory. And Indiana is another one among those teams. But Big East might only have three or four. Pac-12 is only going to have one or two, I think, too, because Arizona State has a couple tickets that other teams don't have that include, like, a win over Kansas when Kansas had Azubuki and LeGerald Vick on their team. So that's that. So, yeah, don't rule out Murray State for an at-large possibility. Utah Valley, New Mexico State. Those two teams, by the way, are combined 36 and 11. I'll make a pick for this one. I'm going to say New Mexico State wins and covers the best team in the Western Athletic Conference. Purdue Fort Wayne at Denver. Montana at Weber State. By the way, those two teams are combined 32 and 15, and that's a pick em. Montana's the best team in the conference, but I'm going to take Weber to win at home. ESPNU, you have Arizona at Utah. Utah's laying three. I think they win in cover. Montana State at Idaho State. 10 o'clock, Santa Barbara at UC Riverside. BYU at San Diego. Northern Colorado at Idaho. Pepperdine at San Francisco. Southern Utah at Sacramento State. Northern Arizona at Portland State. Number three, Gonzaga at Loyola Marymount. Gonzaga's laying 20. They're going to win in cover because that's what they do each and every game. ESPNU have St. Mary's at Santa Clara. St. Mary's is laying 11. I think St. Mary's wins, but Santa Clara covers. I think this game's closer than the 11-point spread. I think this is going to be rather like a 6-point game rather than an 11-point game. And then last but not least, you have Cal Poly at Hawaii. Tomorrow I'm going to do my second bracket reveal mock edition. NBA, pretty big slate last night. The Nets defeat the Cavaliers 148-139 to in triple overtime. That was a much-needed win for the Nets as they go into the All-Star break at 30-29. and Cleveland's 12-46. and D'Angelo Russell, 36 points, 7 boards, 8 assists. Karis LeVert had 12. Jared Allen had 10. Rondé Hollis Jefferson at 17. Joe Harris had 25 off the bench. Jamari Carroll at 18, including a game tying three pointer to force triple overtime. Shabazz Napier at 10, and Alan Crabb at 14. Rodion's Carusis didn't play due to a coach's decision. And that is very strange because he's been a good player for them this year. And meanwhile, for Cleveland, Colin Sexton had a good game. He had 24.6 boards and 5 assists. C.D. Osmond had 13. Off the bench, Marquise Chris had 23. Chris is playing a lot better. He played well last night, and then he played well in Monday night's game against the Knicks. And then Jordan Clarkson had 42 off the bench as well. The Bucks defeat the Pacers 106-97. Much needed win for Milwaukee. They're 43-14. Pacers are 38-20. Giannis Adetokounmpo had 33 points with 19 boards and 11 assists, so a triple-double for him. Chris Middleton had 15, Malcolm Brogdon had 17, off the bench are Sonelia Sova at 11, and George Hill at 12. Boyan Bogdanovich had 20, Miles Turner at 11, Darren Collison at 14, off the bench Devonta Sabonis had 14, and Tyreek Evans had 10. The Celtics defeat the Pistons 118-110. Boston 37 and 21, Detroit 26 and 30. Jason Tatum had 19 points. Al Horford had 17 points, 14 boards, 8 assists. Marcus Smart had 16. Gordon Hayward started, he had 18. Marcus Morris had 11, and off the bench, Jalen Brown had 17. Meanwhile, for Detroit, Blake Griffin had 32. Andre Drummond had 21, 17 boards. Reggie Jackson had 18. Luke Kennard had 11, and off the bench, Wayne Ellington, I believe that was his first game as a Piston, had 13. 
The 76ers defeat the Knicks 126 to 111. Philly goes to 37 and 21. New York drops to 10 and 47. 18 straight losses now for the Knicks. Joel Embiid had 24 points and 14 boards. Tobias Harris at 25. Ben Simmons had 18 to go with 7 assists. Jimmy Butler 13.7 boards, 8 assists. JJ Redick had 15 and off the bench. Boyan Markjanovic had 10. Meanwhile, for New York, DeAndre Jordan had 12. Dennis Smith Jr. had 13. Off the bench, Mitchell Robinson had 14 points and 13 boards. Alonzo Trier, 19. Damian Dotson had 16 with a couple three-pointers. And Kadeem Allen had 13. The Raptors defeat the Wizards, 129-120. to Toronto is 43-16. and Washington's 24-34. and Pascal Siakam, a career-high 44 points and 10 boards. Norman Powell at 11. Serge Ibaka at 10. Kyle Lowry had 14. And Danny Green at 10. Kawhi Leonard didn't play. And O.J. Anaby off the bench had 22. Meanwhile, for Washington, Bradley Bill had 28 with 11 assists. Jermichael Green, I'm sorry, Jeff Green had 23. Trevor Reza had 19. Thomas Bryant had 13. Jabari Parker off the bench had 22. And Bobby Portis off the bench had 12. The Bulls defeat the Grizzlies 122-110 in a thank- tankathon. Chicago's 14 and 44. Memphis is 23. And 36, Otto Porter Jr., career high, 37 points for the Bulls with 10 boards. Laurie Markinen at 21 with 10 boards and 6 assists. Robin Lopez had 25. Zach Levine had 15 with 6 boards and 7 assists. They're better to do anything new off for Memphis. Jaron Jackson Jr. at 12. Mike Conley at 12. Avery Bradley at 15. Off the bench, CJ Miles and Jonas Valanciunas, as well as DeLon Wright, each had 12. So that's ironic, all the Grizzlies. I'm sorry, the uh, Raptors players that came over in the Gasol deal each had 12 off the bench. The Timberwolves defeat the Rockets 121-111. Good win for the Timberwolves on national television. They're 27-30. and Houston is 33-24. and James Harden had 42 points to go with 5 boards and 6 assists. Eric Gordon had 13. Chris Paul had 16. Kenneth Fareed had 12. Off the bench, Gerald Green at 13. Meanwhile, for Minnesota, Carl Anthony Towns had 25 points, 9 boards, and 5 assists. Jeff Teague had 27 points and 12 assists. Josh Okogie had 16. Lil Dang had 13. Dario Sarge had 15 with 8 boards. Off the bench, Taj Gibson had 12. And Derek Rose had 12. The Heat defeat the Mavericks 112-101. Good win for Miami. They're 26-30. Dallas is 26-31. Dwayne Wade actually led the Heat in scoring off the bench with 22. Bam Abadeo off the bench had 12. James Johnson off the bench had 12. And as the starters go, Deion Waiters 20. Josh Richardson 14. Justice Winslow 11. Kelly Olynyk had 10. And Mio for Dallas, Luka Doncic 18 points, 12 boards, 9 assists. Tim Hardaway had 20. Max Kleber had 11. And off the bench, Dirk Nowitzki had 12. The Nuggets defeat the Kings 120-118. to Denver's 39-18. Sacramento's 30-27. Paul Millsap had 25 points and 13 boards. Nikola Jokic, 20 points, 18 boards, and 11 assists. Jamar Mullery had 10. Will Barton had 13. Malik Beasley had 21. And Monte Morris off the bench had 10. Meanwhile, for Sacramento, Buddy Hill had 25. De'Aaron Fox had 15 with 10 assists. Harrison Barnes had 19. Nemanja Bajika had 13. Off the bench, Marvin Bagley had 11. And Bojan Bogdanovich had 16. The Trailblazers defeat the Warriors 129-107. An impressive win for Portland. They improved to 34-23. Golden State drops to 41-16. Steve Kerr got ejected in this game for arguing a flagrant one foul call on Draymond Green. And you should see the highlights. Kerr literally threw the clipboard to the ground and he got, him je- got himself ejected. That was pretty fun to watch. Kerr's face was literally red. And then Kevin Durant had to hold them back. But we got a great win for Portland. Damian Lillard, 29 points with 8 assists. CJ McCollum only had 15. Alfred Camino had 12. Mo Harkless had 10. Yusuf Nurkic had 11 with 11 boards. Jake Lehman had 17 off the bench. Evan Turner had 12 off the bench. And Seth Curry had 11 off the bench. We offer for Golden State. Steph Curry had 32 points as well as Kevin Durant. And that was pretty much their offense. 
in this game. The Clippers defeat the Suns 134-107. Clippers 32 and 27. Phoenix 11 and 48. Losers of 15 straight. So them and the Knicks are in an arms race for uh, the worst record. Daniel Gallinari at 20, Vika Zubak had 16, Shea Gilgis Alexander at 10, off the bench Lou Williams had 30, and Montrezl Harrell at 19. Meanwhile, for the Suns, Dan Drayton had 20 with 8 boards, Devin Booker only had 10 points, Kelly Oubre Jr. had 28 points, Jamal Crawford had 17 in his Clippers return. Only three games on the slate tonight is the last night of games before the All-Star break. You have... At 7 o'clock, the Hornets at the Magic. 7.30, the Knicks at the Hawks. And then TNT tonight, you have the Thunder at the Pelicans. OKC's laying 4.5. I think they'll win in cover. They are by far the better team. Anthony Davis will play a lot of minutes. And Paul George will continue his compelling case for the league MVP award. So give me Oklahoma City on the road tonight. NHL. Only two games last night. The Penguins defeat the Oilers 3-1 to on... Wednesday night hockey on NBCSN. Pittsburgh's 30 20 and 7. Edmonton's 24 25 and 5. Number one star of the game with 38 saves on 39 shots. Matt Murray, number two star of the game with the goal. Brian Russ, number three star of the game with the goal. Teddy Bulger. The Ducks defeat the Canucks 1 0. First game with Bobby Murray behind the bench. They are 22 26 and 9. Vancouver's 25 26 and 7. Number one star of the game with 35 saves on 35 shots, Kevin Boyle. Number two star of the game with the goal, Jacob Silverberg. Number three star of the game didn't have any points, but just played a good game, Hampus Lindholm. Big slate tonight. At 7 o'clock, the Flames at the Panthers. The Islanders at the Blue Jackets, 7.30. The Senators at the Red Wings. The Stars at the Lightning. 8 o'clock, the Canadians at the Predators. The Avalanche at the Jets, 8.30. The Devils at the Blackhawks, 9 o'clock. The Blues at the Coyotes, 10 o'clock. The Maple Leafs at the Golden Knights. 10.30, the Canucks at the Kings and the Capitals at the Sharks. I'm surprised Capitals-Sharks didn't get picked as a last-minute NBC SN game. Now I'm going to do my latest edition of my 2019 NFL Mock Draft. I believe it's my sixth edition. Some changes. There's big news regarding who was the projected first-round pick. Jeffrey Simmons, he tore his ACL. So that certainly hurts his draft stock. He is not in my latest mock draft because of that injury. And to the mock draft we go. Number one, Arizona Cardinals. Select Nick Bosa, defensive end, Ohio State. Two mock drafts ago, I had Quinn and Williams here, but Bosa is the best player in the draft and certainly has a chance to be a multi-time All-Pro player. The Cardinals have needs everywhere on the roster, with the exception of quarterback. And getting a franchise guy on your pass rush is enticing to go along with Chandler Jones on the pass rush. Two, San Francisco 49ers. Josh Allen, defensive end, outside linebacker, Kentucky. Allen was a key cock to the Wildcats defense, which drove them to what was a great year for that program. His draft stock has risen dramatically, and the 49ers are a logical fit because they have a need at the position. Three, New York Jets, Quentin Williams, defensive tackle, Alabama. Williams was an intimidating presence on the Tides defensive line. He was probably the best interior lineman in the country. The Jets have needs everywhere on the roster so they can build around Sam Darnold. But passing up on a good interior lineman that reminds me a lot of Aaron Darnold is tough to pass up on if you're the Jets. I should say Aaron Donald. For Oakland Raiders, Rashawn Gary, defensive end, Michigan. The Raiders begin to draft with three of their first-round picks, with their first one going on Gary who somebody that didn't pan out like Jim Harbaugh thought at Michigan. And he will help them replace Khalil Mack in the long run if he produces. Five, Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Jonah Williams, offensive tackle, Alabama. The Bucks are a team that has mostly needs on the defensive side of the ball. But getting a lineman... 
that's probably the best one in the draft, and they need help on that side too to protect Jameis Winston and what is a make-or-break year for him. So the smart pick here would be Jonah Williams. Six, New York Giants, Dwayne Haskins, quarterback, Ohio State. I don't think this pick is going to change in my mock drafts anytime soon, unless if Haskins gets hurt or if there's a trade. But the Giants need to get going with this post-Eli Manning thing right now, or else this is going to set back the franchise a long time. Yes, la- yes, last year they didn't pick a quarterback, but that's because there was a generation talent by the name of Saquon Barkley sitting there that couldn't be passed up on either. And I don't think the Giants have any regrets about that. As Saquon Barkley established himself as the best running back in the game, and he's somebody that you can build your team around. He's the best running back that's come out since Adrian Peterson. But Haskins, to me, could be special. He reminds me a lot of the um, Deshaun Watson from the Texans from before Watson towards ACL, like and because of how dynamic he was. I think Haskins can replicate that. And having a good running back with Saquon Barkley is certainly a good help. And then obviously Odell Beckham to throw the ball too is a good thing too. Seven, Jacksonville Jaguars, Drew Locke, quarterback, Missouri. Blake Bortles' era is over, and Tom Coughlin is regretting that contract extension, so they go with Locke here, who I think will be a top-10 pick in this draft, whether it's a trade-up or somebody just picking him at their spot outright without a trade. But he has a good arm, and he's somebody that had a good finish to his college season. Eight. Detroit Lions, Greedy Williams, cornerback LSU. Williams is the best corner in the draft, and the Lions could use another athlete in the secondary to go with Darius Slay. A pass rusher is probably the more pressing need if they lose Ziggy Anson in free agency, but Williams would not be a bad selection either. Nine, Buffalo Bills. Ed Oliver, defensive tackle, Houston. Oliver was once projected a top five pick, and his stock has dropped dramatically, so there's a chance Oliver is a steal at this point. The Bills need more help on the offensive line rather than the defensive line. But the retirement of Kyle Williams opened up a hole that Oliver can facilitate. 10, Denver Broncos. Kyler Murray, quarterback, Oklahoma. Yes, the Broncos just agreed in principle to trade for Joe Flacco, but that doesn't mean that they won't draft a quarterback with this pick. They should take Murray, who is sticking with football for good, and let him learn under Flacco just like Lamar Jackson did a year ago with the Ravens. 11, Cincinnati Bengals. Devin White, linebacker, LSU. White was the best linebacker in the country this past season, and he would be a fine selection. Vontez Burfecht is injury-prone nowadays, and Preston Brown is a free agent, so White would provide some energy to an aging Bengals defense. 12, Green Bay Packers. Jachai Polite, defensive end outside linebacker, Florida. Polite is someone coming off a breakthrough year in college, and his draft stock rose in light of it. The Packers can use some high upside players on their pass rush with Clay Matthews aging, although the secondary is arguably a more pressing need. 13, Miami Dolphins. Daniel Jones, quarterback, Duke. I do think the Dolphins like next year's quarterback class better, but they seem ready to move on from Ryan Tannehill. Jones is a very fast riser thanks to a strong showing at the Senior Bowl, and I can see Miami taking a chance here and saying screw with their original plan. 14, Atlanta Falcons. Clayland Farrell, defensive end, Clemson. The Falcons have a need at the position if Gardy Jarrett departs in free agency, so this pick makes sense. Dabo Sweeney has three talented defensive linemen slated to go in the first round, and Farrell here is the first off the board. 15, Washington Redskins. Montez Sweat, defensive end, Mississippi State. Some may have felt a while ago that this was a reach, but Sweat's stock has risen so much after a good senior bowl that this could wind up being a steal. Sweat posted double-digit sack seasons two years in a row, and he's a solid run defender too. 16, Carolina Panthers. Cody Ford, offensive tackle, Oklahoma. Cam Newton has had trouble staying healthy the last few seasons, so offensive line should be the Panthers' priority. Ford is all over the place on people's mock boards. That I have him here in the mid-first round. 17, Cleveland Browns, Yadni Kajusti, offensive tackle, West Virginia. Guess what? The Browns actually have a good roster, so they don't have any obvious needs. 
where they can use some help as offensive line as their tackles aren't good and Kajuste can end up being a good left tackle to help protect Baker Mayfield. 18 Minnesota Vikings. Dalton Risner, offensive tackle, Kansas State. The Vikings were arguably the league's most disappointing team this past season, and their biggest issue was protecting Kirk Cousins. Ford would at least help the Vikings' offensive line and find holes for Dalvin Cook. 19, Tennessee Titans. Byron Murphy, cornerback, Washington. Murphy falling this far would be a pretty big steal for the Titans. Yes, they already have a good secondary with Malcolm Butler and Kevin Byard there, but it wouldn't be a bad idea to add another talented young defensive back to that group with Murphy. 20, Pittsburgh Steelers. DeAndre Baker, cornerback, Georgia. The Steelers need a wide receiver due to the impending departure of Antonio Brown, but this time around, I have a corner mocked here with Baker. He would bring athleticism and energy to a secondary that can use some of that. 21, the Seattle Seahawks. Deontay Thompson, safety, Alabama. Thompson would be a steal dropping this far. Legion of Boom is gone, and the Emerald City drafting the best safety in the draft would be great for Pete Carroll's young secondary. 22, Baltimore Ravens. Kaneel Harry, wide receiver, Arizona State. Harry is someone who could wind up being a steal from this spot. This would be a nice weapon for Lamar Jackson, who needs a downfield threat guy to help his development. 23, Houston Texans. Jawan Taylor, offensive tackle, Florida. Cornerback is another Texans need, but just Sean Watson badly needs protection, and Taylor would help the problem. The Texans had the worst offensive line in the sport this past season, and that should be the team's priority this offseason. 24, the Oakland Raiders from the Chicago Bears. Josh Jacobs, running back, Alabama. The Raiders offensively, their core is aging, and Jacobs would be a solid fit here. He draws comparisons to Alvin Kamara, and he would be an upgrade over the duo of Doug Martin and Marshawn Lynch. 25, Philadelphia Eagles. Dexter Lawrence, defensive tackle, Clemson. This is the second of three defensive linemen from Clemson that I have projected to go in the first round. Lawrence reminds me of current Eagle Fletcher Cox, and the thought of those two in the interior together is scary. 26, Indianapolis Colts. The Christian Wilkins, defensive tackle, Clemson. This is the third of the three defensive linemen from Clemson that I have mocked. Wilkins could be an immediate starter for Frank Reich on the defense, which needs more playmakers. 27, Oakland Raiders from the Dallas Cowboys. T.J. Hokinson, tight end, Iowa. Jared Cook is a free agent, so it makes sense for the Raiders to replace him with Hokinson. He is a fast riser and would be a nice piece for Derek Carr in that offense. 28, Los Angeles Chargers. Mack Wilson, linebacker, Alabama. The Chargers do have a ton of playmakers on defense, but their defense was exposed against the Patriots and need more help defending the run. Wilson would be a good addition to the linebacking corps to strengthen that unit. 29, Kansas City Chiefs. Nadir Asterly, safety, Delaware. The Chiefs could use talent at every position on the defensive side of the ball, especially the secondary. Adderley is a fast riser thanks to a strong senior bowl and he'd be a solid choice here for KC. 30, Green Bay Packers from the New Orleans Saints. Noah Fant, tight end, Iowa. Jimmy Graham isn't the same player he once was in New Orleans, so the Packers should snag the best tight end in the draft with Fant. He is very athletic, and he can have a similar impact as Dallas Goder did as a rookie with the Eagles this past season. 31, Los Angeles Rams. Jalen Ferguson, defensive end, Louisiana Tech. Ferguson is someone who is a fast riser to do a strong showing at the Senior Bowl. The Rams have a needed pass rusher with Dante Fowler Jr. headed for free agency, and they don't have the cap room to re-sign him, so this makes Ferguson a solid pick. 32, New England Patriots. Trayvon Mullen, cornerback, Clemson. Mullen is a fast riser as of right now, and this is a possible need pick, depending on Jason McCourty's future with the team. A pass rusher or even a possible Tom Brady successor here is in play as well. That's it for my mock draft. Now I'm going to do my second baseman rankings as we begin spring training. Tomorrow I'll be doing my third base rankings. I have 35 players on this list. Number 35, I have David Fletcher of the Angels. He is somebody that is not very good. Obviously, 
more of like a role player and even they can use an upgrade there if the team were any good. 34, Nico Goodrum Tigers, same thing. It's sort of a role player slash um, really shouldn't be playing in the big leagues kind of a thing. 33, Garrett Hampton of the Rockies. He's somebody that is a highly touted prospect that really hasn't done much yet. 32, Adam Fraser, Pirates. He's shown some flashes, but he, to me, I don't know if he's the long-term answer there. 31, Jonathan Villar of the Orioles. He was in the deal that sent Jonathan Scope to Milwaukee last year. I think he could be flipped again if he has a good year. 30, Lourdes Gurriel Jr. of the Blue Jays. He... Played around the infield. He's projected to be their second baseman as of right now. He's a bad defensive player, but he can hit. 29, Hernan Perez Brewers. He's somebody that is a good utility guy, but he's slated to be um, a platoon at second base as of right now, as well as 28, Corey Spagenberg of the Brewers. Spagenberg showed some pop with the Padres, but I don't know if he's the long-term answer there. Oh, well, they do have a long-term answer. It's Keston Hiura, their highly touted prospect, but they're keeping him in the minors because of that dumb rule. 27, Dustin Pedroia, Red Sox. He's somebody that isn't the same player he used to be, and he's been hurt all the time. It's part of me wonders that the Red Sox should really just consider cutting bait at this point. 26, Jerkson Profar, Athletics. He's somebody that didn't pan out to what the Texas Rangers thought he was going to be, and then they moved on from him in the offseason. Maybe a change of scenery can do him wonders. 25, Wilmer Flores, Diamondbacks. He's slated to be their second baseman. And he obviously had a lot of good streaks with the Mets when he played there. 24, Ian Kinsler, Padres. He won't be their second baseman for long. He's going to be traded or he's going to be turned into as a utility guy once Fernando Tatis gets called up to be their shortstop and then Urias will move over to second base. And by the way, I don't have prospects on this list unless if they seen some big league time. And I have Urias on the second base list. I'll get to him eventually. 22, Starlin Castro, Marlins, another trade bait player. Number 21, Joey Wendell, Rays. He's somebody that really showed some signs of having a breakthrough. Number 20, Colton Wong, Cardinals. He really didn't pan out to what they thought he was going to be. Number 19, Josh Harrison, who's still sitting on the free agent market for some dumb reason. 18, Ben Zobrist of the Cubs. He's slated to be their second baseman, as Javier Baez is actually slated to be their shortstop. As of now. Because of the uncertain future of Addison Russell. 17, Yon Moncada, White Sox. I'm just wondering at this point if he's just never going to reach his potential. Maybe the Red Sox saw something and they threw him in the sale deal to get it done. And now that win looks, that trade looks like a major win for the Red Sox because he helped them win a World Series. And Moncada hasn't turned into the 30 home run, 100 RBI guy that the White Sox thought they were getting. 16, Luis Urias, Padres. He's going to be one of the breakout players of the game this year. And I have him this eye because of projections. 15, Joe Panic, Giants. Somebody that's going to be traded this year because the Giants are a last place team and want to rebuild, or should be rebuilding, I should say. 14, D. Gordon, Mariners. Gordon is somebody that I think will also be on the move at the trade deadline. I think he's going to be pretty good for the Mariners this year because they're going to be relying heavily on him. 13, Jonathan Scope, Twins. A prime bounce-back candidate for me after a disappointing short tenure at the Brewers after having a good run earlier last year at the Orioles. Number 12, Rodan Odor of the Rangers, somebody that has a, a lot of power in his bat but really hasn't shown it over the last couple of years. I think he has a big year this year. 11, Cesar Hernandez, Phillies. He's somebody that is a very gritty player and doesn't get the love he deserves. 10, Chris Taylor, Dodgers. I think that 
He took a step back last year after a really good 2017. He's a good defensive player, and he can play all around the field for them. He's slated to be their second baseman. Nine, Daniel Murphy, Rockies. I think he will start the season at second base, although Bleach Report has him as a first base, but I do think he's going to be their second baseman when the season begins. And then they'll have the Ryan McMahon slash Mark Reynolds combo at first before Brendan Rodgers comes up. But Murphy's somebody that's going to have a field day in Coors Field. Number eight is Brian Dozier of the Nationals. To me, he's a prime bounce-back candidate on a team that could be a contender in the National League. After a disappointing year last year with the Twins and Dodgers. Seven, Robinson Cano, Mets. I'm fascinated to see what kind of year he has coming off the PED suspension. But once he came back, he was hitting around 300. He's never been hurt, but he obviously missed time with the suspension last year. Six, DJ LeMayu, Yankees. I think he'll play a lot of second base for them when the season begins. And then depending on once Didi Gregorius comes back, maybe he becomes their first baseman if Luke Voigt struggles. But there's a lot of possibilities with LeMayu, but I put him among the second baseman because that's where I expect him to play most of the year. Five, Whit Merrifield, Royals. He's somebody who is underrated. The Royals, I believe, extended him, if I'm not mistaken, but they really should have traded him when his value was high, and they could have gotten something back. He would have been a nice fit for Boston. Four, Ozzie Albies, Braves. He's somebody that had a very good first half and then tailed off in the second half last year. So this one has a bit of a question mark, but I'm high on Albies. Three, Scooter Jeanette, Reds. He's somebody that had a career year a year ago. I think he's the best second baseman in the National League. Two, Glaber Torres, Yankees. Yes, I think he's going to play a lot of shortstop in the beginning of the year before Didi Gregorius comes back, but I do think he'll see most of his time at second base. Oh, and another possible position for LeMay, by the way, is DH if they decide to put Giancarlo Stanton in left field. So don't rule that out for LeMay. But I think Labor will see a lot of time at second base, so I have him listed as a second baseman. He had a good rookie year, but not a great rookie year. I think his rookie year would have been great if he didn't get hurt, and he probably would have been second place to Shoy Otani if he wasn't hurt last year. And number one, Jose Altuve Astros, no doubt about it. He's the best second baseman in the game. He was the AL MVP two years ago, and I think he's going to have another monster year this upcoming year. And he's one of the few players that deserve that big contract extension. After being a World Series champion, multi-time batting champion, and MVP, he deserves all the money he's making because he's a very good baseball player. Now I'm going to do my best bet of the day, brought to you by FanDuel. 12-team parlay, 12 college, or I'm sorry, 11 college and 1 NBA. Houston, Ohio State, Louisiana Tech, Belmont, Western Kentucky, Cal State, Bakersfield, Jacksonville State, Northern Colorado, San Francisco, St. Mary's, Hawaii, and the Atlanta Hawks. About 4.5 to 1, wagered $1.32 with, to win $5.94 at the payout of $7.26. That's it for today. I'll be back tomorrow recapping college basketball and man NHL. Look ahead to tomorrow's games. I'll do my second baseman rankings, the bracket, and obviously my best bet. I hope you guys have a great day, everybody.